Hello and welcome. I'm an oral health improvement practitioner for Community Dental Services and I'm joined by my manager Charlotte. Myself and Charlotte are based in Oxfordshire and we work hard to improve the oral health of Oxfordshire and spread key messages. A message that we feel is really important is that every smile counts. And today we are lucky to have Lucy join us to answer some questions about her experience with a beautiful and unique smile and some challenges she may have faced. Lucy was referred to us from Clapper, Clapper standing for Clefton Cleft Lip and Palate Association is a small charity who works to improve the lives of people born with a cleft and their families in the UK. Community Dental Services have been fortunate to work closely with Clapper in the past and hope to continue to do so in the future. They're a fantastic team who really do change the lives of others. So hello Lucy and welcome and thank you for Hi. taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. <laughs> so our first question to you is what does your smile mean to you? Um, so the first thing I've realised that I notice about any other person I see, whether that's someone I'm meeting for the first time or even just a passerby on the street, obviously pre-COVID without masks and things, the first thing I would notice about someone is their smile. Um, because being born with a cleft, you can it's a very obvious thing to notice in other people. So that's something I kind of always subconsciously look out for when I'm walking down the street and stuff. When I do see someone who has a cleft just passing by it is it's a nice little familiar feeling that you get but yeah it's it's lovely to see smiles because they obviously mean um positive things for everyone for a variety of reasons yeah absolutely absolutely it does go a long way doesn't it a smile definitely 100 <laughs> percent. i have to, i have to confess i do the same thing i look at people's teeth it's really bad <laughs> Not, not quite the same, Lisa. I don't get a nice warm glowing feeling usually. <laughs> normally, normally the opposite. Um, so can you explain for us, the people who are, aren't familiar with the cleft, what kind of cleft did you have and which bit was affected? Um, so I was born with a unilateral, so one-sided cleft lip and palate, um, which is on my left side. It's trying to mirror it out. So um, yeah that meant that I was obviously uh, born with a gap in both my lip all the way through to my palate um, so yeah. And when you were younger because obviously you're nearly you're 17 so you're getting ready thinking about university so when you were much younger can you can you recall the first time that you either asked about it or that your parents told you about it or were you looking at baby photos that looked different to what you looked like then what kind of initial do you remember the initial conversations that you had around what it was I don't remember any initial conversations I have kind of pinpointed parts in my memory where I remember a bit say being involved with clapper when I was younger but not because I was aware of cleft it's quite a strange thing actually thinking back through my childhood and thinking I did these things but I didn't really know why I did them um one pinpoint moment I could probably recognize was just before my bone graft, so November 2013, um, I'd be, I think I'd been speaking to my mum and was like, I want to do something for charity. And so I was like, I'm going to do something for Clapper um, because my mum kind of told me about how they'd helped her when obviously she was pregnant and had me as a newborn, um, kind of the support they gave to her. So that probably before my bone graft when so I was 10. And so that's when you begin to kind of, think about things like oh what's happening here why is this going on um before my bone graft so that's when I began to kind of think about it a lot more um then yeah okay and did you so that's that's really good in a way then so you didn't have lots of people because um in the work that I've done talking to sort of five-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds that they're they're the sort of uh, five yearly sort of checkup they you know some of them sort of say that they find it really hard because you know other children will point it out and they you know some children find it hard so they don't know what to say or they've been empowered by their parents with exactly what to say or how to you know have that come back so did you not really have those experiences um like for me I might have done but honestly I can't remember like so, so much I've been, had so much treatment over the last kind of 17 years the only thing I kind of remember early on was I used to have speech therapy a lot during primary school um so that would mean I'd have to leave a little bit early on a Monday or whatever and I remember going to hostel appointments during primary school and people being like oh where'd you go and I was like oh I went to hospital had an appointment and people didn't normally ask um but it, it is something you build up as you get older when people begin to ask those questions because as you get older your appearance obviously becomes a bit of a bigger thing 
yeah. for yourself and for other people mm. um people begin to ask oh what's that scar on your lip for oh why are you going to hospital all the time and you have to you build up your own personal script for it almost in a sense which isn't a bad thing um it's not something that many people are aware of unless you've come into direct or kind of indirect contact with someone with a cleft yeah um so yeah I can't think of any specific examples from when I was younger interacting with other people but definitely as I've gotten older as you've got older and um so you've mentioned there that you had quite a lot of appointments and you were going to have surgeries um can you remember anything particular about any of the surgeries so you you recounted your bone graft was that that the most um difficult one to go through because you were that much older you knew more um so I've had seven I was trying to count through how many I've had. So I've had seven, but four major ones, three minor ones. And obviously the first two were obviously when I was a little baby. So that was my lip, my initial lip repair and palate repair, which I have absolutely no memory of whatsoever. Um, Because that's before two, isn't it? Isn't that? Yeah, I think I had, I had mine quite young. I think I had my lip repair three, four months old. And then my palate repair not long after. I don't know the exact um, timeframes of that, but my, one of my first memories of anything ever is of I had to have my palate re-repaired when I was four so just um just as I was going into primary school and it's been quite a funny thing that's happened is that my palate re-repair and my bone graft have both fallen on the exact same date which is my brother's birthday so November 22nd of November um and so I've had those under the care of the South Thames cleft team so that's under guys and St Thomas's yeah and so quite a lot of my surgeries have been Evelina which is a wonderful children's hospital have so many glowing things I could say about them they've always been amazing um and I have a little faint memory of walking along Westminster Bridge in the morning because we would have got the Piccadilly line into Westminster or whatever the train line is um but I distinctly remember my grandma and grandpa came up with my brother um I think in the afternoon I think before I'd gone in because obviously you stay over like a day because it's a very big surgery before surgery. you go mm-hmm. under and um and they came with this um Winnie the Pooh like balloon like a green heart-shaped Winnie the Pooh balloon I loved Winnie the Pooh when I was younger mm. and the funniest part of that is that what is it like 14 years on from that that balloon is still inflated and what? it's at my I'll see if I can find a photo of it actually quickly because <laughs> it's crazy. it's still inflated in a vase at my grandma's house. Oh, um, I, asked, I asked her if she could send me a photo of it and here it is. Wow. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, that's it's like a little stick crazy. balloon. Oh, that's so It cute. is. I'm like the helium they must have put in that. It's crazy. Um, yeah, wow. But yeah, like that. So that's one of the things that one of my first ever memories. I lit, I it matches up perfectly to the fact that that balloon is still there. Still there. So, oh, yeah, that's a great. And it's, it's crazy. That's one of my earliest memories as well. Because other people's earliest memories are, oh, I did this, so I went here. And I'm like, one of my earliest memories is being in hospital. But it's a good thing because it was, it's always kind of been a more positive experience than a negative one. Yeah, that's really good. Excellent. Okay. That's really lovely. Thank you. I think Sophie's got some questions. Yeah. So we're wondering if you've got any photos of your smile from before your surgery and after. And Um, uh, oh yeah, go go ahead. Go ahead. Um. So like I I've been talking about this a lot recently with my mum. So going through like all the questions and things, like thinking about things. Obviously, I was kind of officially properly discharged pre like just before COVID, like February last year. And um, literally only this year I had a conversation with my mum in the car, like random, random conversation came up. And I was thinking when you're going through treatment, you never really, it never really stops until you're officially kind of discharged. Like there's points where it like you have less, but it's a continual thing going on, especially with orthodontics as you get older. And so I'd finally got the time to kind of step back from it and go, this is everything that's happened. And so my mum was like, we, we didn't really take many photos when I was younger because we didn't really have a camera. And so but I remember having photographs taken all the time at hospital, like actual proper medical ones. So I was like, I'm going to get in touch with the hospital and see if I can get access to my file. 
So they said it would take like three months, but I'm really excited to be able to get hold of like the actual medical photographs to be able to see the journey I've been on. Yeah. Because there are photos of me as like a proper newborn baby, like without my repair done, yeah. like when I just got home or when I was in the hospital. Then there's photos of me as like a toddler or being at primary school with the repair done. And there's nothing in between that kind of four year gap, which is kind of a really big part of the developing. Yeah. And then also of kind of how far my teeth have come since having so before my before my bone graft I had a retainer and then after my bone graft I had a, a chain and another retainer and then I had braces for like five years and then I've got retainers and wires on the back of my teeth now. But I never during all that treatment happening, you never kind of get to see the progress. But it's only looking back now at photos of me when I was like 10, I'm like, oh my goodness, my teeth were a mess. <laughs> and all of the hard work that obviously went into making my teeth so lovely and straight and kind of my mouth look so good now. Oh, it'll be so um, lovely to see those photos when you get I, them. Honestly, Just like... I'm, so, I'm so excited to see them because it's kind of like, I'm really proud of my smile because I know how much work has gone into it. And it would just be really lovely to see how that has properly progressed from the beginning point. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, well, we'd love to, to see them. And a lovely them. thing to keep as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, a lovely, like, a lovely thing to keep, lovely thing to reflect 16 on. 16 years thing to share. of your life of, of Honestly, all those changes. Crazy. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So oh, I'm glad you did that. It's good. Yeah, it's really lovely of us to hear that you're proud of it and you're excited to see that journey. So you're oh, not yeah, nervous definitely. about any aspect of it. You know, it's an excitement. It's an achievement for you. Yeah, it's, it's learning about a part of yourself. And that's something that is really important about being born with a cleft is that it's part of your personality. It's part of your character development. It's a massive, massive part of your life. And so I take that. Obviously, there's negative things that have, have come with it over treatment, over just living with it in general. But what I take from that is the positive parts of it is that you have an extra little bit of your life that you can really explore that most normal people don't really get um so yeah I'm, I'm really excited to get those through and oh, have lovely. a look at in my computer or whatever it's gonna be so yeah exciting. we're excited for you I think yeah <laughs> we, we like can do a little follow we can do a little follow-up story yeah, yeah we'll follow up. Nice. Be like let's see <laughs> the photos and also like all the um the orthodontics notes, notes and things yeah. like all of those things yeah. like teeth charts x-rays like it's Absolutely. it's crazy yeah. i warn you it'll be a lot to read through because they do have to write a lot of notes it'll be a <laughs> stack like this big that come through the post and i'll be like i didn't ask for this paperwork. work um but yeah oh bless you so lucy the three key aspects of oral health are brushing diet and dentist um and that's what we focus on at community dental services so I'd like to ask you a couple of questions just about your oral health routine, if that's OK. Yeah. Um, so my first question is, how how did you find looking after your teeth when you're little? So you're brushing and things like that. Do you have any standout memories of looking after your teeth or how you had to do it differently to other people or anything along those lines? Um, my mum has always been a very kind of not pushy is the wrong word what's what I'm kind of thinking about encouraging <laughs> a stickler a stickler for brushing your teeth my I love I love like, your mum already <laughs> morning and night you brush your teeth because it's oh. so important and um and I remember when I was younger like if you'd go to like a review or something at the hospital um on one occasion I remember being given one of those mirrors like the little dental mirrors and it would be so exciting to oh look, I can look at my back teeth that's so exciting um but yeah, I um, when I first got my braces, that was so strange trying to kind of make sure I kept that clean. I was quite um, uh, compulsive with it at first. Like I have to keep it so clean. I can't yeah. have any that are eating apples was painful because you just get all the apples stuck in your braces. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the, like eating an apple without braces for the first time was a oh, b- blissful experience. Um, yeah. And even, even so now, like I've had to make changes because I have a bridge uh, just like where my uh, cleft is. And so I have to kind of use like special floss to make sure that it doesn't kind of food get stuck and things. Um, but I, uh, a motivator for me was that I would often be complimented by my orthodontist being like, oh, you brush, you <laughs> do so well brushing your teeth. And it'd be great. And if I'd be sat in another chair and yours would be like, oh, telling someone, oh, you need to brush your teeth. I'd just sit there and, 
like a little bit smug <laughs> like I brush my teeth so well oh um, so, you're a dream so, yeah. Lucy <laughs> oh my my mum would have been sat there like good parenting yeah um, yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely I so win credit, for credit the mum for that one credit oh. <laughs> so there's a lot of young adults I don't think appreciate how much more is required when they have a brace mm. you know there's a lot of areas that's so much more difficult to get to um and obviously the negatives you put all this work into straightening the teeth or, or getting that great smile to take them off to have dental decay or things like that um, oh, underneath honestly. which is just disappointing for, mm. for the patient and for the, the orthodontist mm. but I have to say it was lovely to hear you say apple which is tooth friendly instead of a uh, sweets or something like that <laughs> <laughs> no because like, I, I just kind of I've never kind of been into like toffee or anything so I didn't have that problem and even like I, I'm pretty sure I didn't eat them especially when I had my braces anyway but um yeah apples distinctly in my memory or if we want to go a little bit less dentist friendly popcorn but I mean that's always a problem <laughs> it's with fine if anyway, it's plain but, um, yeah yeah plain homemade popcorn there you go. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, no but apples definitely distinctly were one that would get stuck and be a yeah. bit annoying um but yeah <laughs> Oh, bless you. So I, I, I assume that you're still incredibly vigilant with your oral care routine now. Um, oh, yeah, as a young definitely. Adult. Do you find um, apart, anything in particular tricky to do? Or is, are you just going to touch apart, on that? Apart from I'm a bit bad at remembering to wear my retainers at night. So obviously I had I had retainers before I had my bone graft, I had retainers after. Before I had a bridge, I had a retainer with a tooth on it. Um, so that was another weird experience I used to have to do brushing my teeth at school and brushing my retainer before and after eating at school. Quite funny, I went on a school trip a few years ago because I got my bridge in literally before the pandemic and which when I was like properly like discharged, they were like, yeah, you can go now. Um, and I was in Berlin and we were eating donuts and one of the boys at school like gave me a donut and I was like, oh, thanks. I took my retainer and he was like, <gasps> he's like, your tooth's just come out. And I'm like, oh no, it's okay. I'm like, got got you know oh. um, Halloween prank um paint it in for you a little too <laughs> um they Sometimes like stuck they one them. on oh did they yeah, yeah and oh I remember a completely unrelated story now we've completely gone out of here but I remember being in because that was under the care of restorative dentistry now so this is like big adult stuff and um I remember they got a guy in to like color match it to my teeth and he was like it's this specific color and I was like it's just a tooth like it just doesn't it was it was crazy my mom and I was just sat there like wow this is this is big work That's like good. painting it like specific yeah. color oh yeah it was it was great but the look on his face was hilarious but yes I need to remember to wear my retainers every night right I'm Absolutely. gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna note jump to in here note to self you're you're not too far away from going to university do you mm. think do you think hand on heart that you know that you that may slip a bit so you already so does your mum still remind you and do you think my that's mum, going to change <laughs> my, my mum sometimes goes are you remembering to wear a retainer and I'll go yeah mm, yeah, probably, yeah. I'll be like I definitely wore it last night don't forget <laughs> oops <laughs> but yeah I mean I think obviously with life going out and having a final it's like I'll go to my friend's house and leave him at home and it's like I just need to when I'm at home I need to remember to wear them all the time because I do have wires on the back of my teeth, but my orthodontist was like, yes, they're your kind of backup, but you need to wear your retainer so we don't reverse all of the hard work that's gone into your brain. I'm like, yes. Absolutely. I'm sure I'm pretty sure you will. You sound you sound very, very focused. So yeah. fingers crossed. If I put my mind to it and don't get lazy, then I will. <laughs> so this is this is my note to self now, wear your retainer. <laughs> okay, so you've been completely discharged. And yes. so do you, um, obviously, the rest of your family, are they very good as well? Do you think, do you think because you had a cleft, they've all been very then more mindful themselves, do you think, around their own oral health? Because they were so encouraging of you. What about your brother? Is he younger than you? Yes. <laughs> and, and so was your mum as hard on him as, as she like my mum has been slightly more harsh on my brother, but that is because my brother is worse at remembering to brush ah. his teeth. Okay. So my mum would go into my brother's room. I, I think she still does now. Being like, "Have you done your teeth?" And he's like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Your toothbrush is dry. You haven't done your teeth." <laughs> so it's it's always the the cat out. Um, mm. Yeah, it's probably a story loads of people can relate to. Um, 
but yeah so I just have my younger brother so I suppose he's kind of because he doesn't have a cleft I suppose that connection with oral hygiene isn't really there as much although my mum was has always been encouraging mm. he's a he's a teenage boy that doesn't want to listen to what his mum says mm. um but yeah for me like oral hygiene has been a massive part of my life when people are constantly inspecting your tea and like the surrounding area you're like I don't want to be embarrassed by having an unclean mouth mm. whereas I think for him he just likes um sweets a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Um, you know, you mentioned earlier about when you were at primary school, you had quite a lot of speech and language therapy. Was that was that enjoyable? Was it something that you look forward to going to? And I used to love speech therapy because it would literally just be playing like with marbles and things. And I wouldn't even know like <laughs> I was doing it. Do speech therapy. Um, apart from like, obviously, I remember her being like goats and and because sh- those are the really tricky sounds tricky I can sound. do yeah. my s's and my t's and etc yeah um but I um I did that I, I can't tell you how long for I remember going when I was at primary school um but then at my 10-year review sorry that's my dog at my 10-year review um at hospital, I went, I went to see like everyone because it's one of your big, big, your big reviews. MOTs. Yeah. Yes. MOT. That's it. M- MDT. MOT. Oh, one, I was just calling it an MOT like MOT. a car MOT. That, like you're having everything. Called, but it is called something an like MDT. that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, MOT. Multidisciplinary yeah, team. That's it. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. That's it. That's what that did in my head. Because MOT, yeah, is my big MOT, big checkup, you know. Yeah. With, Everyone. But it's an MDT. <laughs> that's what it puts in my head. Um, yeah. So at my, when I was 10, um, I went to see this um, speech and language therapist woman at the hospital and she recorded me speaking and my mum was sat in the corner of the room and um, once she turned the camera off she was like no one would be able to tell you had a cleft and that was like wow oh that's such a good moment I mean my dad sometimes calls me up on it if I get really tired I'll begin to kind of fall into a little bit of a slur when I make certain sounds. Um, but yeah, that was a really like cool moment when she was like, yeah, no one would be able to tell you how to clap from your speech. No. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Cause it, cause it's like this culmination of everything, all the hard work, you know, your hard work, your mum and dad's hard work, all the people at hospital, everything culminating into hearing, hearing. Yeah. It's yeah, fine. When, when, You've done a when good the job. professional when the professional is telling you no one will be able to tell, it's like I feel like a little warm, yeah. positive feeling, yeah, and my mum sat in the corner just smiling, and it's yeah, like, oh, that's yes. lovely. Yeah, that's it, brilliant. It's all paid off. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, other than obviously, you've mentioned quite a lot of the hospital, and obviously, you know, or you know, all the credit due to your mum as well for helping you through. But do you think there's a, has there been other people during your seventeen years that have given you support? Uh, around your cleft um hmm. um the only real people that really kind of were aware of my cleft were obviously the people at hospital and my family um and my surgeon was professor Hares at St Thomas's and he was so lovely and funny and he like recently retired and it was like really sad um because I've now finished and he he'd was like I was one of his first patients in the UK and so one thing I remember my mom telling me is that oh he used your photographs as a baby for like a big presentation I'm like oh that's exciting (laughs) um but yeah so he was he was always so supportive my orthodontist Sarah she was amazing her name is literally Sarah Good so she's (laughs) pretty pretty good orthodontist very good yeah um but yeah so (laughs) they were all so 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 lovely and so supportive and also just people I met through Clapper so when I was younger we went to Christmas parties and things and I remember having kind of my mum making friends with other parents who had children with cleft so that was a really valuable thing for for my mum and my dad to be able to speak to other parents Mm -hmm. but also for me just at a young age even though I didn't know what a cleft was so thinking back, I was like, oh, yeah, I've just got these friends who are who are just people um, who had clefts. And obviously, I think that normalises it in your brain as a child, seeing other people with mm-hmm. it. And that is something that continued to happen 
um, when I went to Clapper Rents, when I got a bit older, doing day trips and residentials and things. And just also speaking now, being part of the council, not only speaking to people in the council who I've become really, really close friends with, um, but also when we do events for, for young people and I get to speak to other people a year, two years, three years younger than me who struggle with self-confidence or whatever because of their cleft and being able to speak to them is really kind of inspiring to me knowing that I can support them and then that also bounces back supporting me with my own confidence because it's a rocky road for everyone and so knowing that I can impact someone else's confidence in themselves then directly comes back and helps my confidence um so yeah that's a that's a good thing that's really lovely that's really lovely Lucy there that's fantastic and yeah what a great and inspirational role you must be for these other kids who maybe are struggling to see someone like you who's you know amazing oral health you know you know really working hard on your speech making sure you're looking after your teeth like it's so impressive and uh, really really lovely you're so so enthusiastic and really <laughs> really you. happy to have been and privileged to have been able to to meet you but I think Lucy uh, I think Sophie's got a, f- a few more questions so just touching on that really I, w- I was gonna say it's it's so obvious to us that you're an incredibly positive person um with a great outlook in terms of the advice that you are giving to, to children or teens um, with cleft lip or palate, is there anything specific you tell them that, that you could tell us about? Any specific advice? Um, I mean, I've probably kind of touched on it. I only really give advice from my own experience because I feel like that is the most valuable advice you can give to anyone. Um, so I normally go with like three main points is have faith in the professionals because they know what they're doing. They're there for a reason and they are there to support you a hundred percent all the way through. And so that's why when we talk about kind of worrying, I didn't worry too much when I was younger because I was in the care of these amazing people. So I didn't have to worry because I felt safe. I felt fine. I didn't have to kind of stress about anything. Um, Second thing, don't be afraid to ask questions because your parents um, know what's going on and you might not necessarily understand it. Like going back to me reflecting on stuff with my mum, I was like, so wait, why do I need a bone graft? Because I know they took bone out of my hip and put it somewhere, but I don't know why. She was like, yeah, you had a gum notch. And I'm like, a what? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that is. She's like, there's a gap in your gum. That's why they put the bone. I'm like, oh. So me, 17 years old, having had the surgery seven years ago, still, still didn't know why. So it's always good to ask those questions especially when you're curious um because you know you want to learn about yourself it's important but kind of the most important part of it is being like be proud of yourself because you've been through a lot like people won't see that you've been through a lot because like for me like my surgeon's done such a good job it's kind of difficult to notice at certain points like if I'm wearing makeup you can barely kind of see it Um, But it's so important to be proud of your smile and your cleft and sharing that with the world, if that makes you comfortable, because you should be proud of it, because it is what makes you so unique. Um, And it's something that makes us just like an individual kind of community. It's what makes us kind of that, that thing. So yeah, those are my kind of three, three main things. Amazing advice. And I think, to be honest, we could all be giving that advice to everybody about everything. You know, they're, they're yeah. such key pieces of advice in terms of any struggles or any difficulties that, that we should all be taking on board. So amazing. Um, thank you. And then, Lucy, we think every smile counts. Do you? And if so, why? Oh, 100% every smile counts because my smile, like I say, is my favourite part of my appearance. Because not just because like smiles are positive things, but because I know how much work how much manpower, how much kind of time and effort has gone into making it the way it is. And so even if people don't know it, every kind of like our clapper slogan for last year's awareness week was every smile tells a story, which is one of the best, or might have been a few years ago now, but one of the best slogans I've ever heard ever because it's so accurate. Um, Because if you see someone smiling, there's a reason for it. But even if you don't know that reason, that will then in turn make you smile. It's contagious in the way that we don't need to anti-back our hands all the time to not catch smiles because smiles are good things. We want to catch them 
even if you can't see them under people's masks and things but um especially in kind of the situation we're living in at the moment with everything that's going on it's so important to stay positive and share your smiles with people because you have no idea what someone else could be going through if you're walking down the street and if they can kind of see your smile in because it will go up into your eyes obviously from underneath your mask then I think that's just a little bit of positivity for everyone absolutely wow I don't know about you Sophie but I I felt very touched by this I, know, I, do. <laughs> I think you're amazing Lucy absolutely oh, amazing you. really really impressive and what a lovely question to end on and it is true every smile does count and it is so crucial and it does tell a story doesn't it and thank you for sharing your story with us it's been really important um if you've got any questions about cleft lips or anything you can go to the uh, clapper website which you know uh, lucy's sporting a bit of clapper there so you can see uh, the logo there <laughs> um and if you've got any further questions so you've watched our interview with lucy and you think oh i've got some th thoughts about oral health or what was she talking about about cleaning in between in between the teeth all that kind of thing you can head over to our website which is communitydentalservices.co.uk and of course, we've got all the lovely social media going on with loads of information. And if you want some family based fun, we have got a specific family fun page as well that you can head to. And just once again, a huge thank you, Lucy. It's been a real privilege to meet you and chat with thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'm sure you're going to have the best future ahead of you. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. And we Beautiful. look forward to seeing and hearing about that folder of photos and notes that oh, you're going to get. Definitely, definitely we'll love to touch. follow up. Yeah, it would be <laughs> lovely, Lucy. It would be really great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Lucy. Thank you.